and welcome to another edition of WP Engine Builders. My name is Nick Diego and I'm a developer advocate here at WP Engine. Today we're going to be speaking about the block locking API in WordPress, what it is and how you can use it to restrict specific blocks within the interface for your users or your clients. It's a great way to curate the editing experience. All right, for today's video, we're going to be using the 2022 theme. It's always a great starting point to just use the core WordPress theme. And we're also going to be using the uh, Gutenberg plugin. So the Gutenberg plugin includes all the latest and greatest features that come that are coming to WordPress soon. And as we're exploring new ways to build modern WordPress websites, we want to make sure we're using the latest and greatest functionality. So to get started, we're going to explore the block locking API. That's the point of this video. We're going to hop on over to pages. So the idea behind the block locking API is you can restrict the movement and removal of blocks. Now in the future, there might be functionality to restrict editing of blocks themselves, but for right now we have, we can restrict the movement and removal of blocks. So you may be wondering why would you want to do that? And to, to kind of show you a good example, I've created a custom pattern uh, and I've added it to the 2022 theme. I placed it under columns and we're, it's called testimonials. So it's a very simple pattern um, and it includes, it's basically, so we'll, let's look at the list view here. We can see that it's a group, we have a title, we have some columns, and within each column, we have some dummy text where a user could write, fill in a testimonial, add an image for the person that left the comment, their name, and wherever the testimonial came from. So you can imagine, imagine you created this pattern for a theme that you're distributing or for a client. Usually block locking is very useful uh, in client settings. And you provide them with a pattern. But now notice that if I'm a user, I can come in here and I can start, you know, I can, you know, move things around. I can really kind of mess with this layout that you may have took a long time to, to construct. Now, this is a very simple layout, but I very imagine a very like complicated pattern that maybe it's tied to brand aesthetics or the design of your theme. And you want to provide people the ability to edit the pattern or edit the blocks, but not completely, for lack of a better word, destroy the design uh, that you were intending to create. So I'm going to undo a few times here. So the entire idea of a block locking API is it gives you the ability to lock down blocks so that a user can still edit them, but they can't move them around or remove them, thereby kind of messing with the layout. So let's pretend that we have this testimonial pattern that we want to distribute with a theme. And I don't want users to be able to move things around within each column. So they want them to be able to edit them, edit the blocks, but not remove them or move them. So what I'm going to do on each column is I'm going to click on the little dots here and then you'll see the lock option. When we click the lock option, we want to say disable movement, prevent removal, and apply to all blocks inside. So I'm going to click apply. And now you can see inside of here we have the paragraph block is now locked. Now this is something that's going to be continually iterated on and you'll see that we ran into a bit of an issue here in the latest version of Gutenberg where the locking mechanism didn't carry all the way through our blocks. So this is something that will be fixed in the future, but we can do this again. We just want to make sure everything is locked. So we're going to come down here and we're going to lock each thing, each item. And this takes a little bit of work, but when you're creating a pattern, you're really only doing it once. You know, you're really only locking this functionality once. And then once you're done, Everything is locked. Now, if I was to try and you'll notice now that there's the little, so if we click here, you can see that there's the option to move things up and down. There's also the option to remove this quote block. So make this just quickly lock the quote block. So now if I click on this quote now, I don't get the movement and I don't see the removing up, the ability to remove. Again, if we come over here, we have the ability to remove. Similar on this image, I can't move it around anymore. Whereas this image, I can move it around and I can also remove it. So now 
we would copy this, this locking functionality across each column, but a user can now edit the content, select the new image, change the name, but they can't remove the blocks and they can't move them around. So this provides you, you're able to dis uh, distribute the pattern, distribute the layout to the client or to the user. They can edit it, change it to how they want, but they can't completely just start, you know, inadvertently or purposefully removing blocks and kind of messing with the layout. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly apply the locking functionality to the rest of the blocks, and then we'll go from there. All right, so there we go. It took a few seconds, but again, once you set up a pattern, you lock everything, you're really only doing this once, so it's not too, too arduous. Now, one of the things as I was playing around with this and adding all this locking functionality, it got me thinking, when it comes to the column, you know, do I really want to lock down movement? Let me explain why I might want to open up movement here. Because what if a user wrote this testimonial for the middle column, but after they completed it, they thought, oh, I really want to move that to the right or move that to the left. That's so that's some functionality or some, you know, you know, that's some functionality that you probably want to keep. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to not disable movement on each column. And when we do that, we can see that I can, well, I still have many things locked. I can't remove the column. You can now move the columns around. So this is, we're adding our locking functionality, but we're giving users a little bit of flexibility to work within the layout. So now as a user, so now as a pattern builder, I'm quite happy with where we are in terms of what's locked down and what's not. So what I want to do now is I want to take this, all the changes that I made and apply that to the pattern itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the whole thing. I'm going to do copy block. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually just copying by clicking that button, I'm just copying all the markup. Now what I want to show you here is that when you lock something, it adds the attribute lock and then it indicates what's locked and in what's not. So you can, if we scroll down here, you'll start to see um, we have a bunch of locking attributes applied all the way throughout. Now, if you were to add this manually to the code, it's pretty challenging. So I like just taking my pattern, putting it in the editor, manually locking things and I can see exactly what's locked and what's not. And then once I'm happy with that, I just take the whole pattern, I copy the whole thing, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop over into the editor. Again, I just add, manually added this pattern to the 2022 theme. We can see it right here, table of contents, or not table of contents, uh, testimonials. And I'm just going to copy the whole, all the code for the, for the pattern, remove it, and then I'll paste in my new, my new code. Now what you're gonna see now is when I refresh the page, my pattern has been updated. And when I go back to patterns and I look for my testimonial, we can now see that everything is locked. So you can see how this locking functionality can be quite powerful. You could create a whole bunch of patterns and lock down all sorts of different things and then serve that to your users and provide them with a bit more of a curated editing experience where they're not just given a whole bunch of blocks that they can move around. It's pretty locked down. It's a much more um, user-friendly uh, interface in many ways so they can't inadvertently ruin brand aesthetics or ruin designs, or I shouldn't say ruin, uh, <laughs> change designs. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can use block locking, whether you're serving patterns, you know, there's another article, I'll link it in the show notes about, you know, creating page creation patterns. And we can actually see that here. So if I leave and I create a new page, you can see here that I have some page creation patterns configured on this theme. So I can automatically insert these designs directly into the page. And Imagine if these were locked. So for example, this is an about page with links. 
you could lock down components of this so that the design stays consistent. So while a user could edit these buttons or edit the social links, they can't actually change the design. It's, it's static. So if you have a client site, for example, and you had about pages and contact pages and so on and so forth, you could really lock down those designs so that they couldn't be edited or couldn't be reconfigured, but a user could still edit them. Now, one of the things I want to show you is that while we lock down these blocks, you noticed how easy it is. So let me come back. Actually, let me remove this pattern. Remove this. And so while we've locked down the, um, the blocks in our testimonials pattern here, while we lock these down, it's obviously very easy for a user to come in here and unlock them, right? Um, and that's not exactly what we want. We want to, a user to you know, not be able to, especially like maybe an author or something, not be able to unlock the blocks that we have locked kind of as an admin or whatever. So there isn't a user interface in order to do this directly uh, within WordPress. However, there's the functionality that allows you with PHP and just a short little function to lock this down. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at, so this video is a companion piece to an article. And we can see this article here about unlocking the power of the block locking API. And this has a lot more information about how you actually set this stuff up. But one of the pieces here is about how to restrict locking and unlocking to specific users. And this gives you a nice little code snippet that shows you how you can just, in your functions.php file of your theme, you can lock down the locking functionality so that a user, you can lock down patterns and, and things like that, but you, and other users can't, don't have the UI to actually unlock things. So for example, all I would need to do is take, oops, take this content, this uh, code snippet right here, I come over to my theme, I go to my functions.php file, the bottom, I paste it in, and let's just take a look at what this function is doing. So there's a specific filter called block editor settings all, and this allows you to configure the can lock block setting. So here what we're saying is that if a user can activate plugins, then they should be able to lock and unlock block. So okay, what does that mean? Well. Only administrators can activate plugins. So with this setting applied, or with this uh, filter applied, only administrators can lock and unlock things. So if you're an editor, if you're an author, you won't, you will, the blocks will be locked down, but you won't be able to unlock them because you're not an administrator. So this uh, condition could be anything. You could restrict it to specific individuals based on email address. You could restricted to specific user IDs, anything you want, really anything at all you can think of, you can lock down the locking functionality. Okay, so one more thing. If you're savvy, you might recognize that while we are can control who can unlock and lock things here, you can still, if we go over and look at the editor, a user can still access the code editor like I showed you earlier and just scroll through and find the relevant lock attributes and simply remove them. So this isn't great if you're really trying to create a really locked down experience for your users or for your clients. However, this article also includes a code snippet about how to restrict access to the code editor itself, which might be something that you would want to add in addition to this locking functionality. So you can just copy this code snippet here. Again, you have full flexibility to lock it down based on user role, anything you want. It's all PHP. And you just put that in your functions.php file of your theme, just like we did before. All right, well, I hope you learned something today about the block locking API in WordPress. It's a great way to restrict content within the interface for your users or clients and really curate that editing experience. Again, my name is Nick Diego. I'm a developer advocate at WP Engine. And if you're interested in more videos about building with the latest WordPress techniques, make sure you to like and subscribe here on WP Engine Builders. All right, that's all I have for today. See you on the next one.